Hey guys, Steve Morales here, and today I'm gonna do a short video on a home workout that you can do. A lot of times I have clients that go out of town, they're stuck in a hotel, if they're traveling, and they need a workout to do, and there's no equipment. So we're gonna cover some things that you can do, and this is just, uh, like I said, a simple, uh, total body, kind of like strength conditioning workout that you can do. I'm gonna include some MoveNet um, exercises in here as well, and I'm gonna show some progressions. And we're not gonna go over completely all the different form details, because there's a lot of different form that I uh, can cover and, and all of that with this. So just the basics today. Now in between each exercise, okay, we're gonna have five main exercises, and in between each exercise, you're gonna do a hand foot crawl. Or like I said, we're not gonna go into great detail on each of those, although I'm gonna give some tips. And the first thing that we're gonna do <clears throat> is actually gonna be squats. And there's two different ways that you can do this, okay? We can do this for reps and we can do this with moderate to high volume, or we can do this for time, which is gonna be more of like a Tabata time scheme. Now, if we're gonna do reps, we're gonna do 25 for everything, okay? Now, if you need to progress, you need to start at a lower uh, rep range, we can always start with 10 and then slowly increase this as you get better with any of the exercises. Now, uh, like I said, in between, we're gonna do a hand foot crawl, and I'm just gonna do the distance in here. It's not gonna be uh, a huge distance. We're just gonna work on the skill, but we're gonna do that to work on the skill and to have the active rest, okay? Now, the first exercise is just gonna be a freestanding squat, okay? Feet a little bit wider than the shoulder width. Toes slightly tilted out if I am wider than my shoulders, which I am right now. Driving out on the knees, push the hips back, down, up. I'm raising up my elbows, that's my counterbalance. I usually don't want people that put their hands to their side here. It ensures that I don't round my back, right? Round my shoulders. Now I could do just squats, which would be like this as a rest pause. I could also progress to contractions where I wouldn't stand all the way up, right? So if I'm here, I wouldn't quite stand all the way up, right? So I don't lock my legs out. I'll stop about here. Make sure we're driving the hips back or I could do a squat jump. Now this is gonna be, like I said, it's based off not only the skill level, but whether or not I have enough room. Now I do it here, right? So I could squat down, jump up. Up and down, and I would make that uh, kind of flow for as many reps as I could. If I get tired, I have to at least string two together, right, to make it flow like this. And then if I'm worn out, I could stop. You can progress up and down as needed. In between though, like I said, we're gonna do a hand foot crawl. Tons of videos out there on how to do this properly. Um, this is not a bear crawl. Move Nat terminology says this is a hand foot crawl because we're on our hands and our feet. Bear crawl would be different, okay? Now hand knee crawl, here I'm on my hands and my knees. This is a contralateral pattern, so opposites are moving together, right? This is hand knee. If I bring my knees up a little bit, it then progresses into a hand foot, okay? Bear crawl would be different. My hips would be straight up in the air and I would be still moving to opposites, okay? Different movements. If you wanted to progress, I could still do that. I could start with a hand knee if I'm not too familiar with a hand foot crawl and slowly progress there. The big thing is equal weight, right? We wanna make sure that our strides even, we don't wanna pull ourselves too far apart, which is typically what happens when you start going backwards. The brain gets confused and you're gonna try and make your strides longer and longer. Nice and condensed, not super long, okay? So with that, like I said, it is a contralateral pattern. Anytime you catch yourself going what's called ipsilateral, the same side is moving together, stop yourself, reset, okay? This is good for that left and right brain crossover that a lot of times we wanna reinforce with our kids, right? So here, pause if I went to the end of the room here, and then I would start to go back. Okay, nice controlled. For your in-between, the length of this room is, I don't know, 20 feet, I'm not good at judging distance, but the amount that I'm gonna use <clears throat> is probably, I don't know, 10, 12. I would go forward and backward three times, okay? If I start with a hand foot and then I just can't do it like I'm just stopping too often and I'm kind of burnt out I can progress into that hand knee 
Perhaps I wanted more of a challenge, I might do that bear crawl where my hips are now straight up in the air, okay? So that's the in-between. So we have squats first, like I said, reps 25 to start. After that, we're gonna do push-ups. Most people know how to do push-ups. For this, I don't want the wide stance. Now there are a ton of different progressions with this. We're not gonna do wide, we're gonna do more military style, which means that my elbows need to fold at my side. So if I'm lined up here, that hand is under the shoulder, come straight down, touch, drive straight back up. I want that to be even. If I needed to progress back and it was too hard, I could always just drop to my knees, right? I could come down, up, down, up. Big tip with this is that when I get to the top position, my bicep is facing forward. I've created torque in the shoulder so that it's stable. <clears throat> With that one, same thing, 25 reps. I could progress, like I said, if I needed to use my knees, I could use my knees. If it got to the point where I was so worn out I couldn't do that and I'm only doing one or two, I could go off a dresser or a countertop or something like that so that I could elevate myself and get some of the weight off of it. <clears throat> then you would do your hand foot crawl again. After that, you would do super bands. It's just lying flat on the ground, arms out, feet out, I'll lift up. Pause two seconds, and then collapse back down. With this, when I come up, it's that whole posterior chain, <clears throat> meaning my whole backside. Typically, I want people to squeeze their glutes as much as they can. I don't wanna just dump a lot of pressure on their lower back. You're gonna feel your lower back, but I don't wanna put so much pressure on that that that's all you feel. So I try and get people to engage their glutes as much as I can in that movement. 25 reps right there. Make sure you're taking your two second pause at the top. You then do your hand foot crawl again, okay? After that, <clears throat> you're gonna do full sit-ups, okay? Now, variations on this, arms are up overhead, I'll throw them down and then sit up. I typically don't come all the way up because this is gonna be more like a rest pause because here I'm getting a break, my abs don't have to do much, they've already pulled me up. So I might sit to here. Here my abs are still tight, so a little bit shy of that 90 degree angle. Variations with this, I can always bend my knees a little bit if I'm starting to feel this on my lower back. I do want my chest up at the top. I don't want to round out. So down, I'll throw them up here, and then back down. If you couldn't do this, you could just try crunches, right? We could take that a step back. A modification to make it easier though is that I could bring the leg up and I could throw that leg down. I'm trying to kick my heel down to give me a little bit of momentum to come up, okay? If I wanted to make it more difficult, I could actually just keep my arms here and basically do kind of like a sit and reach, right? Where I would reach up. And for this one, I would come all the way up and then I would slowly come back down. So, <clears throat> modifications within that. You're then gonna do your hand foot crawl again. And then last thing that you're gonna do is burpees. And I know everybody hates burpees, but we got them in there. So for that one, kind of my, my tip would be that I want you to try and make it as quiet as possible. So don't slam your feet onto the ground. Most likely if you're in your hotel room, you probably won't have your shoes on, which makes it even better because you can go for that soft touch. If you have thick shoes on, you're more likely to just let them just clunk onto the ground. And I have my minimal shoes on right now, but the big thing is no uh, burpee fingers, so I don't want my fingers on the ground when I come down. I actually want my hand to plant flat. I'll jump my legs out. I wanna make that as quiet as possible. Same thing when I come in, and then I'll jump up. If you don't have room to jump up, don't worry about that. There is no push up in this one, okay? Now, modification would be that I could actually do it off. Now I have the fireplace in here. You might not have that, but you might have a chair or a stool. I might have to do it off that, or I might have to do it as step backs, okay? Now I'll show you the regular one first. Hands will come flat to the ground, jump out, jump in, jump up. Like I said, as quiet as possible. And if I needed to do setbacks, I could come down, I could go out, out, in, in, hinge properly, and then stand up. What I don't want to see is somebody that just rounds their back and kind of rolls up. Same thing with that, 25 reps, and then you would finish with your hand foot crawl again, okay? 
With this, we would do two to three rounds, okay? So we're doing the, the two to three rounds through this whole thing, and then you're done, time yourself, and then try and beat your time next time you go through it, or try and progress in the movements. Now, if we wanted to do this as to, like a Tabata time scheme, what I would do would be 30 to 45 seconds of work on the actual movements that you're gonna do. And then your hand foot crawl for those trips in between is gonna be your rest period, and then you click back into it again. With that, I would say you're gonna do four to five rounds. We're gonna increase the rounds if we're gonna do that, okay? So, you guys got any questions or comments or anything like that, uh, please definitely do that below. Hopefully this helps you if you're gonna be in a hotel room and you don't have any equipment with you. Like I said, none of this, like I said, requires equipment unless you're gonna try and modify some things, but like if I have that, it's gonna be off a countertop or something like that. Um, and then if you are needing some more in, on like the hand foot crawl or anything like that definitely just look that up on YouTube and there are a ton of great movers out there in the move nat community and the parkour community that have a ton of great like in-depth detailed videos explaining how to do that properly because it'll be the most confusing movement for you so thank you guys so much for watching and get moving